share with you yeah. and your family, your family. The love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God. With one touch, ministries, we're touching hearts and changing lives. Kids, 
My daddy will get us up early in the morning and make us breakfast every day. And it wasn't no oatmeal kind of breakfast. Yeah. He had to make bacon eggs and, and, and cheese grits and, and, and all. He had to do all the toast. You know, he had to do all the extra stuff. So when we were kids, we didn't realize how important that was. We was just kids and we was like, Daddy getting on our nerves. Because he would ask us what kind of eggs we wanted. And then I had one sister, you couldn't make scrambled eggs in, in the same pan with the sunny side up egg. She was crazy like that. So my dad had to have about two or three different frying pans out my because God. he knew each one of his kids. Yeah. He had a whole lot of kids, so he knew each one of his kids. So when he made Misha's uh, uh, scrambled eggs, he made sure that he had a separate plate for Misha's scrambled eggs. My God. Me, I was a cereal type of kid. I like that. I didn't miss cereal. And he used to get mad because I wanted cereal. Because he wanted me to always have a hot meal. But he used to sit at the step. He would say, all right, breakfast is over. Go upstairs and get dressed. So he would sit at the step. And he would always keep the door open. Yes. And the screen door would be locked. He would have the door open. Because he always wanted the bus driver to realize that somebody at this house is getting ready to come out the door. So we would come downstairs, and every now and then we would see him get up and pace and go by the door, look around, peep his head out, because he was waiting for the bus for us. Yeah. And he would tell us, he said, now, y'all got five minutes before your bus come. Y'all better be ready, because I ain't taking nobody to school. Y'all better not miss that bus. And he perfectly taught us how to be ready to go. To go. Yeah. Because see, when you're ready to go, you got everything in your hand. So I praise God because today I changed my language. I told my husband, I said, I am ready, but I ain't ready to go right now. Yeah. He said, oh, okay, that sounds better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I wasn't quite ready. So I changed my language this morning. I said, I'm, I'm ready. But I ain't ready to go yet. He was like, all right. All right. I'm waiting. You know. But I praise God. I want to say happy Mother's Day <laughs> to each and every mother. God bless you. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. I, I, I want y'all to bear with me just a tad bit because once again, I'm all over the place. I try to preach everything that God gives me because I never know if I'm going to see you again. Yeah. I want to impact you now. I want to give you something to chew on throughout the week. I want to be a blessing to you now because I may not see you next week. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you will turn with me, I'm going to go. I'm going to do a few things today. We're going to go to Exodus. Now this tablet been showing off. So, okay, that's alphabetical order. That's not what I want. Exodus, the 20th chapter, verse 12. Let's see.
Wait a minute, I'm sorry, Pastor. Y'all have to forgive me. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I'm good. I'm good. There we go. Good? Yep, I'm good. Exodus, the 20th chapter, verse 1. Verse 1. Uh -huh. In that case, the people all, did all these instructions. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord your God who uh -huh. rescued you from the land of Egypt there you go. and Come place on. of your slavery. Uh -huh. You must not have any other God be but me. Uh -huh. You must not make for yourself an idol uh -huh. of any kind or any image uh -huh. of anything in the heavens or in the earth or in the sea. Uh -huh. You must not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, uh -huh. am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection uh -huh. for any other gods. Uh -huh. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The yeah. entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generation those who reject me, but I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and my commands. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we're going to be talking about items today. Glory to God. I know it's Mother's Day and it's all going to tie in to one thing. We're we going to have a a good time today. Glory to God. Come on, let's give God a praise. Yes. Come on, let's give God a praise. We get ready to have a good time because we get ready to put some work in, y'all. Yes. We're fit to put some work in. All right, Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 to 6, and it's talking about idols. Uh -huh. And I was uh, kind of like fumbling around and trying to figure out God. I said, God, what you want me to do? What, what, what is going on here? I said, I got about three messages here that you don't gave me. I said, I'm sitting here trying to figure this thing out. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, the impact of a mother. Yes. I said, the impact of a mother. He said, the impact My of God. a mother. Yes. We as mothers, we are the ones that impact our children on a major, major level. No matter how old your child gets, uh -huh. they will always remember the impact that their mother has in their life. Yes. They're going to always remember if their mother wasn't there. Yeah. They're going to always remember if the mother gave them love and, and nourished them or the mother spoke negative words on the top of them. My God. My God, you can be a, a positive guidance to your children. Uh -huh. A child is going to remember that. You can be a representation of unwavering faith. A child is going to remember that. Glory to God. Yes. You can bring major, major teachable moments to them. A child is going to remember that. Because why? The impact of a mother. An impact of a mother leaves a stain on a child. My God. For many of us, mothers are real life heroes. I mean, I don't know about you, but there were times in my life I can remember my mother juggling so many different things in her life. I tell this story all the time about the time when my mother had two daughters at one time. Uh huh. They both had a show on the same day. At the same time. A show on the same day and at the same time. But guess what? They were in two different locations. Now mind you, they were in two different locations, but the schools weren't too, too far away from each other. Roughly five minutes driving. But ten minutes plus the five equals... 15, because by the time you leave this from one auditorium to get to your car and to get everybody in 
to go rush down to the other school, uh -huh. you have missed about 15, 20 minutes already. Even though it's a five minute drive. But things get in the way. Cause see, at that time, my mom knew that she had two girls that had a show on the same day, at the same time, two different locations. So what she did was she had a whole bunch of our friends, all of our friends came and then they got in cars and they was coming to support. Some of the friends stayed at one school and the other friends set of friends stayed at another school. But my mother, she was going back and forth. Because why? She was trying to be over here. Uh-huh. And then she was trying to be over there. And that was a moment that I can always remember. Because why? It was a teachable, major teachable moment for me. Yes. But like I said earlier, mothers are real life heroes. That's right. <laughs> During that time, I looked at my mother as a hero. I said, because I see this woman, this little short black woman, just running around trying to be mom to both of her girls at the same time. She's trying to show love at the same time to them. She's trying to give them compassion. She's trying to show them, mommy loves you and I'm here for you children. All at the same time. Yeah. My God. sure our children are well taken care of. Yes. Oh, come on, mothers. I know y'all do that. Yes. Yes. You do, you're still doing it. It doesn't matter how old your children get. You're still doing all that you can to make sure that your children still have that image of mommy being that hero. You still come to rescue them. Even though they're in their 20s, you're still coming to rescue them. Yes. In some type of way. If it's not financial, it's just being that moral support that what most children need. A lot of times, I would say, I just need my mama. Yeah. Woo. Come yeah. on, come on, come on. That, 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 those are precious moments. You have to not, for women who have been divorced or lost a husband or, or just been a single mother, you finally do get somebody, but you're more concerned about what your children are going to say. You're not even concerned about loving that man. Or you're not so concerned about trying to get to know him. You're more concerned about what your kid's going to say. Yeah. So what do you do? You will deny yourself and say, you know what? We moving too fast. And he'd be like, well, baby, we ain't moving fast enough. Well, because see, I got a daughter. Or I got a son. I got children. And, 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 and I don't want them to. I want to take the image. Ooh, glory to God.
stating that somebody was in trouble. Yeah. But as a real life hero, a mother who are real life heroes, a lot of times the kids are going through things and they don't say anything, but you feel that thing. Yeah. That makes you wake up in the middle of the night and say, ooh, something is wrong with my baby. Let me pray for my child. Ooh, something is going on in my household. Something don't smell right. Something don't feel right. There were times that everybody would be asleep in my, in my house growing up. And I would see my mother, she would be walking the floors. Uh -huh. Walking the floors that night. Checking the doors. Making sure the windows were locked. Ooh, Lord, yeah. there, God. Be sitting up making sweet potato pies. Well, because why? She knew that the church, the church building stuff was coming up. And, and, and uh, she knew that uh, she had a responsibility. So she would be up all night to peeling up sweet potatoes, putting it inside a, pe a, a, a pot, a big deep pot, so that why? They can boil and get, get soft so she can mash them down. Because that's a real life hero, that's a mother. That's what we do. We do those kind of things. Yes. When you have a responsibility, you know it's you, your children, you know your family is in need. You up all night worrying how things are going to get done. Yeah. Sometimes, mothers, we sit up all night long because we're real life heroes. Yeah. Sit up all night long trying to figure out how the bills going to get paid. That's the things 
that the Mother goes through. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what a mother goes through because we, we're real life heroes. Uh -huh. We stay up all night long. We carry. But sometimes, as a mother, when you don't always have maybe the child's father in the picture, and you have a son or a daughter, you begin to depend on them a little bit. Uh -huh. Because why? There's nobody else in the household to depend on. My God. So we start shifting our weight a little bit onto them. Oh, come on, y'all mothers. Yeah. Don't pretend that you haven't done it. That's where the word chores comes in. Because you start telling them, when you get home from school, I want you to put that load of clothes that's in the laundry room. I want you to put them load of clothes on. I want to wash and dry and fold it up when I come home. Yes. I want you to sweep the bathroom out. Wash the tub out and wash the sink and the toilet. Yeah. You know, you start giving them responsibilities. And then you call it, you put a sophisticated name on it. You say, the chores. Yeah. Huh. We put a sophisticated name on it. Because, why? That's just what we do as parents. That's right. We find a name for everything. Yeah. You do as I say. Uh-huh. Not as I do. Then what are you doing? Glory to God. Come on now. <laughs> we start giving out responsibilities to these children a little bit too early on. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. God bless you. We start giving So to me, I start developing that look of 
amazing. So in the meantime, in between time, I start mimicking. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Y'all not hearing me? I started mimicking exactly what mommy did. My God. I started stretching myself real feet. Wow. I started pacing the floors at night, checking my doors, checking my windows. She was that real life hero, the impact of a mother. Wow. She impacted me so much to the point that I started picking up her style. Shot by the road shape. Yes. I started picking up her weights. And I started comparing my life. Well, my mother did such and such.
It didn't leave room for God. My God. Jesus. I said it didn't leave no room for God. My God. Because it got to the point that I made Hazel my idol. And God became second. My God. Oh, come on, somebody. We as mothers have to be really careful that I, I know y'all wanted a real good Mother's Day message, but let me tell you something. I have to be truthful. I have to be honest. I have to be upfront with you. Sometimes we have to learn how to parent properly. Sometimes we got to learn how to be corrected in our parenting because we're teaching our children. My God, we're so concerned about the cops killing them, but we don't realize we kill them at home. Well, we're killing them at home because they, it's okay to teach them responsibility, but when is it too early to teach them to be a wife. Wow. Have you thought about when is it too early to make them responsible? Yes. To carry the weight whoo, uh -huh. of a mother. If, it, if you had that child, your daughter should not be helping you raise. Yeah. 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 Y'all ain't going to like it, but it's all right. You should not Yeah. 
children. And when we put too much weight on, and then when they start disrespecting us, then we will wait a minute, I'm still the mother. But you put my responsibility on them. My God, yes, yes. You put a that responsibility on them. Because why? You can't. Because you're the life hero. You're the real life hero.
still cheating. I had to learn. Teacher, you can't steal. But they hurt me. Oh, shut that rubble. I was raised. If they hit you, you hit them back. Yeah. That seed was planted. He said, but teacher, you can't steal back. But God, they took my He said, teacher, I gave you that, but I'll give you many more. But God, they tried to take my husband. He said, if they tried it, and he went, baby, he wasn't spoiled. Come on, somebody. I got it. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. He began to talk to me about myself. 
washes. He said, because I don't want you to become a clean-up woman. Woo, I don't want you to become that clean-up woman. I don't want you to be that woman that cleans up everything and make it seem like nothing ever happened. My God. He said, because it's a